Rhythms of Life Talks with Rido. Hi guys, uh, this is Rido and I have an extremely great uh, honor to uh, present to you my guest uh, for today uh, and this is uh, Leroy Thornhill. Hey guys, how you doing? And it's a great pleasure to have him here because like uh, I have to say uh, at first that uh, he was the guy basically I've tried to learn how to dance, <laughs> to dance music, you know, and I spent hours before the old CRT TV, you know, just trying to put those legs there, you know, and then I'm not sure I can show you later if I succeeded. I'm not really 100% sure, but I tried. I at least tried, you know. <laughs> I didn't know what I was doing half the time. <laughs> no, man, well, fuck, man. I was, I was definitely inspired, you know, and I was like, oh, this is crazy. How can I do that? Okay, so we're just... Uh, just briefly, we just jump into, uh, obviously it's a great pleasure to have you here. It's incredible. It's uh, partly like a dream come true. So thank you for uh, helping me just to experience this. You oh, know? Man, pleasure to be here, man. And uh, I just, uh, just first question maybe, how was your journey into the music scene? I mean, how did all, all that happen? You know, I mean. God, oh, man. I, I suppose just from a young age, I've always been into music, you okay. know. Um, so what like your parents like maybe like uh, listening to records and that you were like uh, or was it just me yeah, yeah yeah i remember the eight track cassettes you know i can clearly remember my dad's uh or my stepdad's music elton john and dr hook the stylistics on these big eight track okay. cassettes okay. and uh then i suppose when i was when i was 10 so it was about 77 punk come out and my sisters <coughs> are both uh, three years older than me and they were into punk so I was into everything from Lou Reed, the Velvet Underground, the Slits, the Clash, everything um, and then by 11 I was break dancing. Okay, okay. Oh no, yeah, I think break dancing first. Then so wh I was were you already mark. that tall when you were then? Or was, was yeah, it? I, was, I was always tall until about thirteen. Okay. <laughs> then okay. everyone had caught up with me. Okay, okay, okay. And then I shot off again. <laughs> but yeah, I was always into like I was a little mod for a while, so I was always into music that you went out to parties to dance, okay, 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 you know, okay. so cool underground -y stuff, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. So it was just always the thing searching to places that you went to dance, mm -hmm, not mm -hmm, to, mm -hmm. not discos, you know. Yes, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So club music basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Funk, Funk, James Brown, yeah, yeah, hip hop, yeah. you know, anything that got you dancing that mm. wasn't on the radio. <laughs> oh, no, no, for sure, man. I totally understand that. Well, uh, saying that, I mean, uh, I'm sure that it has to be incredible to experience the beginning of the rave scene generally in, in, in UK and then spreading worldwide. I mean, how that was, you know, I mean, oh, man, that was the awesome. acid house kind of. Yeah, that was awesome. And I, I mean, the, the, you asked me the question the other day, is it still the same? And it, mm. it's such a hard thing to say no, mm, mm, because mm. there's only two <laughs> reasons that it's not the same. Mm. The first one is because it was totally new yes. in the music yes. and nobody knew what was happening, yes. you know, the authorities didn't know. Enough. And the second one is drugs, uh, ecstasy, mm. you know, because you'd have 10,000 people in a tent, mm. all on ecstasy, no okay. alcohol, just drinking water, okay. no fights. All people done was were there to dance and that was it, mm. you know. Mm. And, you know, I'm not sitting here saying drugs are cool or anything, yeah. but that is a difference. Mm. You know, nowadays you would never have everybody in that club on the same atmosphere yeah. and a happy atmosphere. Yeah. Yeah. You know, music was written to make you feel good. Yeah. Whereas now, you know, unless it's a house track, nobody would use the word love in a, <laughs> in a hardcore song. It is true, yes. You know, and, and I think a lot of the soul of electronic music has been lost because of the producers <coughs> didn't experience that. <coughs> you know, you, you should be writing music to, you know, to put a feeling on the dance floor. So I want to make you rock. I want you, yeah. you know, bass face, or yes. I want to make you feel like you're floating. I, there's, and I don't think there's enough, people get caught between it now. It's like, okay, right, it's a bit of a groove there. It makes me want to nod my head and it's stuck there, mm, mm, you know, mm. it doesn't make me feel a or certain way. Or it kind of relift some feelings. Yeah, 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 and I think it was uh, in a way easier for a producer there because you didn't, you could 
and all the sampling was still fresh, you know, yeah, you couldn't just yeah, yeah. look online and type in samples, you know, yeah. you had to search and yeah. find them. And, yeah, yeah. Um, but now parties are still as good, but in a different way. Yeah, yeah totally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? It's, it's, a, it's a hard one because I hate, it's hard to say oh, it's never going to be as good yes. again. Yes, 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 yes. But it's different. different. That's all. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, I should definitely say, uh, just for those that maybe are a little bit younger or has, hasn't got the, the knowledge that you were part of this extremely <laughs> successful and for me inspiring band uh, or project, you know, uh, called The Prodigy. You uh -huh. know? And basically, I have to say, without no doubt, there's a reason why I got into the music, you know. Uh, I wasn't really, before, uh, I was just experiencing music as music, you know. I never really cared. I liked that. I didn't like that, you know, never really. Uh -huh. And uh, until then, basically, I was totally blown away when I heard Out of Space, you know, as we were talking today, you know, there was something, I don't know, there's something special about the whole track, the, the energy, you know, as well, the video, you know, and everything about that, to me, was so new, you know, and it totally filled me with the energy, you know, and totally changed my life. Do you remember, uh, for example, when you, for the first time, because like, I'm sure, you know, like that Liam was all the time bringing some new music, you know. So, but when was the time, what was the track that kind of triggers you, like you were thinking, okay, wow, this is something that's going to explode or was there uh, a moment uh, like that when you no. was like, I mean, this is crazy. No, I don't think, I don't think there was a, ever a, this is going to explode moment, but I mean, me and Keith, used to go out to get uh, <laughs> together partying all the time and mm -hmm. we sort of met Liam and he was DJing at this party and Keith was like, man, it is awesome. And he said, Can you, will you do, give me a tape, you know, a mixtape? And then we saw Liam at the club a week after and he was like, yeah, I've done that tape for you. Give it to, <laughs> <laughs> to Keith. <laughs> and, uh, he said, oh, I've done a mix on one side and I put some of my music on the other side. And that was it, you know, me and Keith had been out <coughs> at Storia, I think, in London. And we got home, <coughs> he's like, check this out, man, that, that, this is, we listened to his mix, and he's like, check this out, this is his music. Right? And we were just looking at each other, and then, then we were just rocking in Keith's bedroom, right? <laughs> just having it. <laughs> we just like, mate, this, this is unreal, you know? And uh, I remember saying, I'm like, we should ask him if he wants to, uh, the form of back, you know, mm. put up a couple of dancers because mm. there was an Enjoy, a Damsky, yeah. there was all these rave acts okay. at the time, you know. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, me and Keith, used, wherever we used to go, we just used to rock and mm. just that was how we made friends. It was like, man, rock in, you know, yeah, and then, yeah, yeah that was connection. <laughs> and so, so yeah, we listened to this tape and uh, the next week we were, we were out at the club and see Liam and I was like, man, that music's, you know, it's awesome and everything. And I was like, I was like, and I didn't know him that well, you know, we'd only met a few times. So I was like, man, do you, uh, you know, do you fancy trying to make a PA and have me and Keith dance for you? <laughs> and he's like, really, you two come dance for us? Yeah, yeah, you know, is this, and uh, I was like, yeah, yeah, for sure. And then the week after, he was like, yeah, yeah, well, I uh, just got back from London and just went and signed a record deal. And me and Keith were like, fuck, man, never knew, you know. And, uh, yeah, but I remember, I remember at the start of it, uh, we had a friend of us manage us, and he was like, man, you're not going to do all right, you know. I said, yeah, you nah. he said, yeah, he said, you at least get uh, a new car out of it each, mm -hmm. you know. And we're like, oh man, that'd be wicked. <laughs> <laughs> you know, then like, I, know, I suppose 10 years later, Liam's got himself a McLaren F1. Yeah. Half like, oh, yeah. a million pounds. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you got a nice car out of it. <laughs> Definitely, man, for sure, man. But, well, that's um, crazy. But no, we never ever, all we wanted to do was play at the raves that we used to go to. Yeah. You know, and then you were on stage and you were meeting Carl Cox and Mickey Finn and mm -hmm. Paul Oakenfold and all the DJs that you used to go and follow and stuff, you know, and you wanted to play on the same stage with them and that was it. That's yeah. all we ever yeah. wanted, you know. Oh, that's incredible, man. I mean, and it's, it's great to, to hear it from you, man. It's crazy. But I think as well, I think that was one of the reasons that you know, people could relate to us because 
they can uh, identify with us. Yeah, the, you know, the, basically, you were the same people. Yeah, right? four part yeah. dudes yeah. going out partying to the same music and. Yeah. I mean, it was similar to me, but I mean, I, I didn't meet Liam or anyone like I me. Mean, I mean, I just used to like just go out as well and dance, you know, with no, I mean, I didn't take any drugs at the time or any alcohol. And I was really into the music and then slowly I, I, I was really like interested how you can make, make it. it so. Yeah, yeah. But uh, you kind of left Burridge around about 2000, is 2000, it correct? Yeah, 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 and then you just decided you're just gonna go your own way, basically make your own music. Uh, try, try. Yeah, yeah. no, no. I'm, I'm, now you you have a project, right, running yeah, uh, but beside to, your own stuff as well. Yeah, but to be fair, it's kind of you know uh, the new project, the Smash Hi Fi thing, yes. is, is good. Yes, it's good. You know, I can sit here because it's the two of us. It's easier. My stuff, I, I wrote last week, I wrote the best tune I've ever written. Okay. Uh, and my, my music's still not good. It's okay. Yeah. I well, I mean, I mean, it's so difficult if you compare yourself to Liam's music. No, but like, I, I mean, don't. No, I don't compare. Myself. Okay. You can't. No one. You, you can, yeah, there's nobody on the. You might get one person on the planet yeah. write one tune that sounds a bit prodigy, but yeah. no one can keep it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm, I, I don't even. Try and put that pressure on myself. Of course, of course. Yeah. You know, it's no one, if no one else can do it, why should yeah, I be able to yeah, do it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I understand the feeling of it and stuff. But yeah, it's, dance music is, is a struggle for me to write. Mm. You know, I, I like writing lyrics, I like songs, I like guitars, I like things like that. Okay. But I've kind of taught myself and I write music that I'm happy to play. Mm. I don't try and put it on labels and get it all yeah. set. Yeah, yeah. It's just like, man, it's it's just average DJ yeah. music and yeah. DJ music's disposable, you know. You listen to it for three months and then it's oh they're listening to this now and yeah, yeah. so uh, it's not a natural thing to me to write write that sort of music. But you know you keep on teaching yourself, learning production techniques and stuff like that. But the main thing with the band it was like after ten years, you know the minute Keith done Firestarter, yeah. it changed. You yeah. know it become. Keith was suddenly the front man. Yes. You know, whereas yes. nobody, <coughs> it was all about Liam yeah, before that, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. And which was it, was, it was totally cool, brilliant. You know, it was, you have to keep on evolving. Yes. But it got to a point where it was like every new tune was like, right, well, we've got to get vocals on it, mm. you know? Mm. And then I was sort of stuck doing the out of space and starting to dance. And I was more the dance element yes. from where we'd come. Yes. And, the future of the rock side of it was coming with the guitars, the yeah. drums yeah. and yeah. vocals. Yeah. And, you know, it was just like, man, I, I don't fit in anymore. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm not buzzing about dancing to outer space for the millionth time, 10 yeah. years later, yeah, I can yeah. do it when I'm asleep, you know? Yeah, yeah. It's, not, it's not stimulating me. And it was, it didn't need me anymore. Mm. It was like, look guys, we all sat down and it's like, look guys, before we do any more new music, any more tours, I should get out. Because I nearly left a little bit before that when we were touring America, I'd had okay. enough of it. And then it was okay. like, dude, look, let's just see this out, mm -hmm. get back, we'll have a year off, mm -hmm. see how you feel, mm -hmm. and blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. And it was like, no, that's the right time. You know, yeah, I yeah. feel it, you guys will feel it. You know, it's time. <clears throat> time for me to move on so I mean I had my DJ thing I wrote it's don't you call it an indie album whatever which makes me cringe when I listen to it but it was honest at the time and that's that's all I ever say about myself is yeah. even if uh, I put something out and it's not it's not brilliant it was me at the time yeah for sure and I think it's still like it's a brave move you know just to just uh, you know just start your own thing you know like you know because that's not easy for anyone you know like if you are already part of something that is so kind of successful you know oh, and man, then just yeah. put yourself out there you know as, oh, as man, a solo was, artist it know? was so hard for all of us because uh, when we had that time off Keith formed a band called Flint okay Maxim had his album and he was doing tracks with uh, Skin from Yes, Skunk I remember Maxim. that. I now remember that track come out, it was amazing. It, it done, I've done really well everywhere around Europe, mm. stuff like that. Next track he gave them and they're like, right, oh, we're not going to play that. Radio 1. Yes. We're not going to play that. Well, why? Well, it's not what we were expecting. Okay. You know, and it was the same with me. I'd give them my, my single, Amazing and that. 
And like, <coughs> there's, there's, uh, there's five producers or six producers there, you know, and it's like three of them were like, yeah, let's play it. And the other three, oh, I don't know. And then the top guy's like, no. And it was like, it, it, it just it weren't easy. You, yes. you couldn't get people to play your music. Yes. You know, and there was a big thing in England uh, with r racism, basically black people's music getting played. Seal, that's why Seal left England to go to okay. America because okay. you couldn't get your stuff played on the radio. Really? No, not, not much. And then it suddenly, then they come up with urban music. Yes. They called a new name for it and yes. it basically it's black music. Okay. <laughs> like okay. uh, So Solid Crew and, you know, and, and this even now, you look at Radio 1, you've got Radio 1 Live, which is the drum and bass sessions yeah. and, yeah. you know, they, yeah. they've always have to keep it, the black thing in a separate place, you know, and the pop thing is... Okay. What yeah. sells and so they, that's why I never get on the playlist. Yeah. But I'm still white. Well, man, radio, <laughs> you know, radio one is just, is just pathetic, really. You know, uh, playing the same tunes every hour and stuff. You know, not educating people. Yeah. But yeah, so it was it was just a natural progression yeah. for me to leave. It was, you know, I, I got back on stage in 2015. Uh, it done a great hits tour, and it's Liam's like, yeah, man. Come do some gigs, come, Just don't tell anyone. We're... And uh, I think it was like about five shows. And uh, oh, I was How like, was it? Well, I was like, oh, I don't know, man, I don't know, you know, because I said to him, I'll never do it again. Okay. And okay. Uh, he was like, come on, man, it'd be wicked. And I was like, oh, oh I see. So, so I got in the gym for a couple of weeks. <laughs> get <laughs> to get into shape. To speed a bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Going over and over the albums. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it was Brixton Academy, and I remember that was always one of our best gigs ever. Okay. What, what year was that? Uh, 2015. Okay, okay. So, uh, it was like, yeah, yeah, it's like, uh, so do out of space and start the dance. I was like, oh, dude, come on, give me one of Keith's old tunes. Give me something different. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And uh, he's like, no, they're your tunes. You've got to do them, you know. So anyway, fucking, I walked out, and you actually heard the whole state the whole venue go <gasps> all right <sighs> you know <sighs> and it was such a buzz but then at the end of it I come off and i only done the two tunes we come off and they was like man that was a wicked that was wicked you could tomorrow you're up for it tomorrow and uh, for the rest of them and i was like no man no more okay. no more okay. and uh, but that must have been really good feeling you know like I as well i had to see the the reaction yeah from, yeah it was amazing people, you know? because you know not because of me not because of me, but it's not the same as what it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, I, and I can't say this be, because of me, it's because I don't know, it, it, for me it stopped evolving for a while. Mm. I've, I've been speaking to Liam this week, he said mm. the new stuff's a lot more like 91 stuff, he's got okay. the 303 out again okay. and he's okay. doing some access stuff and, you know, and I, I want to be excited about it. Mm. You know, the last few albums. There are still some. Uh, I mean, it's, yeah. it's all, it's yeah. all, like, it's all good, but it's. But you know, as well. Well, I used to. You put the whole Prodigy album on, like the first three, and every single yes. thing was amazing. Yes. You know, there's no and doubt. And then that. now, for me, when they when they pushed it and sculpted it into this rock thing, yeah. they've put themselves in a place that's hard to get out of. Mm. <laughs> you know, because. He's expecting to do vocal tunes all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, when he done uh, Always Outnumbered album, yes, album yes, yes, yes. man, after I left the band, I was getting phone calls from all of them every single day, you know, like, oh man, we're trying to do this, we're trying to do that. Liam says this, Maxim says that, Keith mm. says this. Dude. Mm. It's like, dude, I'm not in this anymore, you know what I mean? What you're calling me for? Yeah. You know, and I think it's, it's very hard for him to re re, re identify get a new identity yeah. and and change it now mm. um, but I'm, I mean I'm, I cannot imagine like because like uh, as well as uh, an artist trying to make my own music you know I mean it's, it's so difficult and, and if you see how much of a great music he has done you know you know so I, I can see that the pressure is enormous you know because like obviously everyone is expecting that it's gonna be another the best thing that I ever heard you know and you know, have, having that, you know, you know, on your shoulders is not an easy kind of task. You know? No, and the, the thing is, it's it, like I was saying earlier, before the internet, you had to be really it was clever different. It was different, to, with the samples yeah. and, you know, yeah. 
And now everyone can hear you, you can probably you could probably go for a record collection for hours, pull out a sample and find it a hundred times on the internet where someone else has just yeah, got yeah, it, it off the internet. You know, it's a different thing. Yeah. But I, I for me, I think uh, when it went all vocally that's become the problem for mm, me now. Mm, mm, you know, I mean <clears throat> Liam can work with anybody on the planet. Mm. You know, to yeah, so anybody, sound as, as, as Liam. To do vocals, anybody. Yeah, yeah. But without always outnumbered, like I said, he didn't use Keith or Maxim for vocals on yes, that. Yes. And it, that was a studio album that was a Liam album. It wasn't Prodigy. Yes. Because they couldn't perform it live because mm. you had uh, Juliet Lewis vocals, you had all these different vocalists. It's like, man, we can't put this on the stage because mm. there's no one to perform it. <clears throat> so that kind of was a tricky one because we, we weren't doing live shows then and before we'd always written music for the live show, you know. But, man, it's, it's still every hook, every riff is amazing. Mm. The music to me is still amazing, but I don't know. The vocal thing for me now is is too samey. Yes, I have to say that for me that the punk the punk attitude is 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 not really what I was so much enjoying about the prodigy because I mean, the, the, like the energy, yes, of yeah, course, yeah, yeah. you know, and and, and 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 the melodies and the structure and everything, you know, the, it's still that, you know, but the 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 kind of the punk attitude in yeah, it. Yeah. For me as well, I have to agree on that. It's a little bit too tired now. Yeah, yeah. It, there should be for me. But I, I can imagine it's so really difficult because I mean, you know, if you want to progress, you want to kind of you know evolve, you know, and then you know, of course, you have to find some limits, you know, for yourself as well, so you can still uh, you know promote it to the public, I guess. You know. Yeah, and but the thing is, when when you've got a platform like that, you can do anything and people will accept it. Mm. You know, yeah, it's true, maybe, you yeah. can you can put a gamble, you can make a gamble. And, you know, for me, I just wish some of the lyrics were a bit more intelligent. Mm. And, mm. you know, they're on that platform <coughs> where you can still look at Rage Against the Machine. You know, Rage Against the Machine still had that attitude of punk or whatever, but there was a message in there. Yeah, yeah true. You know, and, and for me, like, the, for example, the track Nasty Nasty, I yeah. don't like that. I don't mm. think it's very mm. clever. Mm. Mm. You know, I think mm. you the problems of the world, the attitudes of the world, you could come up with something a bit cleverer mm. by saying, the, saying mm. meaning the same thing, yeah, yeah. but metaphors, yeah. you know, I yeah. think, you know, I just think it's a bit too one-dimensional, mm. too samey now. Mm. 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 It just mm. doesn't mean it isn't, it isn't yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, of course it's still... But it's not, It's for me, it's, it, it would never be as fresh as every track he used to write, every yeah, yeah. album we were changing yeah. and it was like yeah. blowing you away, you know? No, I mean, th those are incredible days, I mean, that's for sure, man. I mean, just go back to you uh, and yourself. Uh, uh, are you a person who, like, is, is inspired by uh, your things that you are, like, experiencing through your life? Or maybe, is it maybe movies or books? Or what, what is it that kind of drives you, like... Uh, as an artist, kind of. As an artist, it's it's about the dance floor. Yeah, that's okay. it. That okay. is it. It's it's like <clears throat> it was the same with us. The message is for that two hours that I'm standing there, just forget about all the shit in your life. <clears throat> just party, have a good time, dance. You know, it's an expression of every human's got that in them to yeah. to let out and to let go. You know. Um, that's like what I was saying to you earlier about when DJs have got a program and the crowd don't like it and they stick to what they do, the program that they, people don't like. It's like, dude, they might as well be listening to a CD or a jukebox, you yeah. know. Your job is, even if it, it's not what you do normally, you've got to try and change it for them people. Mm. That's what you're there for, you know. You're, you're not there to play for yourself. If you are, stay in your bedroom, you know what I mean. And don't try and be Mr. So playing stuff that's so intelligent and advanced that nobody's ever heard it, because it's boring. Mm. You've got to slip something in there that's current and stuff, you know? Um, me, it's just about, yeah, it's about mm. dancing and letting off, and that's it. Forget everything else, just have a good time, you know? So we can expect maybe some Michael Jackson from you tonight, or? 
<laughs> <laughs> yeah. So like, dropping Billy yeah, Jean. But I, but I said, Billie that, Jean, like, yeah, I said yeah. to you, I was in, in, in Russia and the DJs go, oh my God, I don't know what to do. Look at them, they don't like it. They don't like it. They don't like it. And I'm just been standing there thinking, come on, do play one thing that changes. He's just playing 4-4, four, four, straight 4-4 four, four stuff. Yeah. And I'm just thinking, man, you need to change the dynamics, you know. And he's, he's going to me, I don't know what to do with it. I said, I don't like it, I don't like it. I don't, I'm not like, play Michael Jackson. He said, what? I said, it'd be fucking better than this. What? You know what I mean? It's like they yeah, know. Yeah, You'll get people yeah. dancing. Yeah, yeah. And it's not ro rocket science, right? Three or four tunes, right? You can do anything. If you play three or four tunes that no one's never heard, right? First couple they'll be having it. Third one, don't know. It. Fourth one, should I get a drink? Yeah. You know, should I go and have a cigarette? Don't give them the... When they think, like, you've got a yeah. different direction, different dynamic. Right, you can play anything. In set blocks of three or four, you can play fucking anything. And nobody will get a chance to not like it enough to leave. Yeah. Because as soon as they think about it, you bring them back with a different dynamic, you know? And you can see that when you're standing there. Man, I can play a couple more of these. This, this shit's work, and I can go there and then come back to it. And, you know... Rock and roll, like I said to you, if you see it when it's all banned and they played every song in the same key at the same tempo, yeah, yeah, yeah. what do I pay money for that for? You know what I mean? <laughs> I wanna, it's not like the album. Uh, it's, it ain't rocket science, mate. It's maybe, really... maybe I'm going to drop Michael as well tonight, man, because you, no. you, you, you definitely make sense what you're saying, of course. Man, I've yeah. got a plump DJ, it's Michael Jackson one. I've, I, I make all my own. I've done one by myself as well. Yeah, uh, yeah but that's with what With a friend I do. of mine, we did the tar, we did like a Billie Jean, you know. Yeah, that's what I do. I've, I've got, uh, and nobody else, I won't give them to anyone. I've got <laughs> Foo Fighters, Chili Peppers, The Police, Bjork. Uh, yeah, I, I just two prodigy ones and I don't give them to anyone then I can play them forever mm. you know and do you have I mean when you're saying this I, I gotta ask also the last question do you have like some special Liam that played that you know only Liam has got and then no 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 no, no. no. I mean because he used to make like a different versions of the original tracks for the for the shows he, right yeah sometimes for the shows sometimes just going off on one with a producer and putting a 303 in one that never had it before mm. and you know but man if, if I had all the scraps that he, he, he never used for tunes I'd be a millionaire <laughs> <laughs> so they were they were quite interesting ideas oh my god he's only only ever done one song that I don't like okay and baby's got a temper oh, I remember you uh, shot the video in Czech Republic Oh, well, no. and, it, and again, for me... It's the it one was, with the milk, right? Yeah, and for me, again, it was, it was just the, the vocal that really done it. Yeah, yeah You know, yeah. like I said, Smack My Bitch Up caused controversy, but we didn't even think about it. It was just called yeah. Keith, so it's, yes. you know, and the m music was a bitch. Yeah, you yeah. Know? But because that done that, it was like... Right, let's do I Love Rehypno. It was, it was like trying to be controversial. Mm. It was like, you don't, if you try, mm. it ain't as cool. Yeah, yeah. If it happens because it's an accident, yeah, yeah. it's kind of cool, you know? So that was, and I've done a remix for that as well. Okay. Somewhere. But I mean, yeah, I quite often do remixes. I don't, I don't get out if they're not good enough. Yeah, well, yeah, that's, yeah. Which is a nice thing, because if Liam turns around, you know, he'll let me play with anything. Yes. <laughs> you know, and I've done it. Well, Hot Ride remix, mm -hmm. and I'd done it half tempo. Okay. And he's like, "Fuck it up, man. I, I, this is wicked, but I don't like the beat, so I, I can't hear it half tempo." So can I come around and we'll put a different beat on it? And I was like, "Yeah, yeah." He's like, "Where'd you get that bass line from? It's fucking wicked." I said, "Dude, I said it's one of the layers of the guitars. Is it? <laughs> you know, there's so many. Every single part, right? When okay. he gives you something for a remix, he says, "I'm like, what?" So much. Shit. What am I going to use as the best bit? Yeah, yeah. You know, his every right. If you think of, and this isn't just Prodigy. If you think of your record collection, right, of from the Beatles to the Rolling Stones, from anybody, Bob Marley, Jacko. If you can recognise that song from the first note or the first bar, right, breathe, or down, 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 down yeah. fire start, yeah. 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 out of yeah. space, yeah. that is genius, right? Yeah. Because that ain't even the best bit of the song. <laughs> he ain't, the chorus ain't come, the build ain't come. Mate, 
if you think Moby, go. Yeah, yeah. You honestly, you you think about it now, right? Every classic song unite from the first note. Mm. And I've spent days just trying to get that first note to be the best. And then, and then oh, that's really good. Well, I can't, well, where can I go from there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's um, interesting. I never actually thought about this like this. It's uh -huh. interesting. That's a good point. Whether it's Star Wars, whether it's soundtrack movies, mm. whether it's TV shows, the minute you hear the first bar, you know that song. Okay, well, I think this is the best uh, part where we can stop our interview because, like, I think this is the message uh, universal for all of us, you know, trying to make the yeah. one the one tune that, that matters, you know. I've given you the most frustrating problem. No, of course, now. no, but no, no. I'll, I'll give it a go. <laughs> the curse is on. <laughs> Mate, I used, and, honestly, I used to write tunes and then I'd sort of get three quarters away for it and at the end I think, oh, I've got to change it after the second drop, bring something new in. Yeah. And I do it and I play it to them. What do you think? I go, yeah, beats cool man beats cool and he gets to the end and he goes that bit at the end that's the best bit why don't you start with that and I was just like oh man mm -hmm. rip the whole thing to bits like because yeah. the best bit's the last thing yeah. and he'll be like you should have started with that and so oh. <laughs> no, no, but it's difficult. I mean, I, I do, I do have a similar thing with the second drops as well. That sometimes they ended up being better than the first one, and then trying to change it, but yeah, not yeah, always yeah. it works, you know, because the the, the build up is different, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so, but uh, I mean, being that as, as a first thing, you know, being it right, you know, I think it's definitely a great approach to look at things, you know. And, and, and well, thank you so much. Hey man, it's, it's been, been a, a pleasure. real pleasure, no and worries. I cannot wait to to hear you tonight, you know, and to have you here in Prague. You know? It's a real pleasure, man. Yeah, man, it's going to be a fun night. We're going to have a fun bit of Michael Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> Leroy. Rhythms of Life Talks with Rido.